some of the legal issues involved with opening back up uh, your business. Maybe you stayed open or perhaps you shut down for a, a small period of time and you're getting ready to reopen and you want to know what all the legal issues are. I, I can tell you as an attorney, if you don't know me, I'm Laurie Lee. Our firm is called the Legal Department for Service Professionals. All of our clients are service providers, as and you'll see some of them today and hear from some of them. And knowing what to expect when you open back up, especially when you, you're providing services to people that may or may not understand all of the things that are going on with some, some protection and safety and health and things. So joining us today, this is Mark McKenzie. He's gonna be our first panelist. Hi, Mark. Hi. Um, if if you guys have any questions for Mark um, as we go along or any of the speakers or me, please type them in the chat and I'm, I'll monitor them as we go. So let me introduce you to Mark McKenzie. Uh, Mark is the owner of Central Bark in Jacksonville, as you can tell by the cute name Central Bark. Uh, they are a dog spa, daycare center, um, salon. So uh, Mark, tell us a little bit about what you offer at um, Central Bark so they can get an idea of your business. Oh, wow. So uh, we are, we do specialize in dog daycare. Uh, we do what's called small group daycare. So never more than 12 dogs to a trainer. Uh, we work on socialization skills throughout the day, sit, stay, recall, things like that. Um, a lot of daycares today are 40, 50 dogs. One person watches them. Um, we never have more than 12 dogs to a trainer or handler. It's a little safer for them. They get more engagement. Um, we also want to stimulate their brains. Uh, so not just physical activity, but mental activity, whether it's food puzzles, agility things, uh, or working on training, right? So we have a trainer on staff. Uh, we do boarding. We don't do a lot of boarding, but we do do boarding. We do grooming. I have two groomers. Uh, one has 15 years of experience. and Another one was a show dog groomer, does 20 years of experience. Um, so I'm pretty lucky in that aspect. And uh, we're just here to do good things for dogs. So let me ask you this, because I have not done the research on this and I don't understand. Can dogs catch the coronavirus? <laughs> so there is one weak positive in the world. That dog was in China. Um, the CDC currently says that that is a no, that dogs cannot carry or spread the virus. Um, however, I guess it is possible to have it on their leash or their collar. So we wipe those things down. Um, but one week positive out of how many millions of cases mm -hmm. across the world, uh, the CDC says it's not an issue for dogs. It's a little different with cats. We don't deal with cats. Uh, as you know, they had some, uh, some tigers test positive and there've been a couple of cats, uh, domestic cats. Um, but all those things were weak positives. I don't, I, me personally, yeah. I don't know what a weak positive is. I don't either. A positive, <laughs> positive, right? Um, I don't know, trying to be impregnant. I don't know. Right. Well, uh, are, are any of your clients, um, when they come in, are they concerned at all about the health of their dogs? And, and if so, what are you telling them? So I would say that we haven't had a lot of questions about the dogs, more about them. So a couple of things that we've done is we have started a curbside pickup. So the parents don't even, they don't have to leave the car. Uh, myself yeah. or one of the team members. Well, yeah. I love uh, that. I am a dog right. parent. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, myself or one of the team members will go out to the car. Uh, we'll take the dog from the car. We use an extra slip leash so there's protection in the parking lot. Um, we bring them in. Everybody's wiped down. Everybody's checked uh, like we would do on a normal day. Uh, dogs come in. They play. Uh, at the end of the day, if a parent wants to come in, we limit to one person inside the the retail space at a time, or they can wait outside. We'll bring the dog out to them as, as we would. Uh, when the people come in, we can take payments over the phone. Uh, if they do come in, uh, plenty of Clorox wipes handy, and everybody who walks in the door gets one. And then every time somebody walks out, we also wipe down as well. Uh, I think the, the questions about the dogs really haven't been as extensive as maybe some people thought they would. Uh, you know, dogs are pretty resilient and fortunately we haven't had any, any issues like that. That's, that's good to hear. And I think, you know, the point really being is that it's not business as usual, right? I mean, you, you didn't fully close down during the shutdown or did you? No, no we did not close. 
Uh, we didn't close anything. Uh, we followed the mayor's guideline and the governor's guidelines. Uh, I had a question about grooming, so I sent a, an email to the mayor's office uh, and they gave us permission to continue. Uh, we did see a, a reduction in business, right? So 30% of my business is, is the boarding um, and it was right over spring break. So we lost all of that. Uh, so mm -hmm. nobody's traveling. We did see that starting to come back a little bit. We saw some people travel last weekend on the long weekend. I was like, yes, thank you. I don't know where you went, but thank you. <laughs> um, and we are getting some bookings into June. So people are trying to get back to some semblance of, of what they've got to do or what they want to do. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, did see, we didn't close, but we saw a pretty dramatic uh, reduction in what we do. So now that you're kind of ramping back up again, huh. you know, it's not business as normal, obviously, because you wouldn't normally go out to the parking lot and pick up the dogs or or do some of these other things that you're that you've put in place now. And so a lot of the questions I'm getting from clients and small businesses is what should I be doing? Like, how do I know what I need to be doing? And I think, you know, there's three of you on here today. And I, I, I strategically chose you because you know, you're dealing with animals, first of all, they're, they're, they're like family, people are really concerned about it. You see a lot of people during the day dropping dogs and picking them up. And so I want to give people some help in finding how they can, you know, do some research, think about the things that they may need to consider as they're opening up and more and more people are coming into their place of business. How did you decide what actions you were going to take? I think the first thing you have to do is be comfortable within yourself and then within your staff. Okay. So we stayed open because the staff that I have were comfortable in what we do. So there are only four or five of us in the building at a time and we rarely stand side by side. Okay. Um, so we're able to truly social distance within our work and within our work environment. Um, had they not wanted to work in this environment, we would have adjusted. Uh, but I think everybody here loves dogs. And if we can do one of two things, one, keep a dog's life normal or give you peace of mind while you're on a conference call, right? <laughs> uh, that's good. But dogs are routine oriented. So you've got to keep them in that routine. And I think what you're going to see now is people start going back to work. They've been home with their pets for two months and the pet is used to that. So when the parents go away again, you're going to see some, some uh, I don't know what, what you want to call it, a reaction, or there's going to be some difference in your pet. He's going to be like, why did this change? So pets are very aware of, of changing mm -hmm. surroundings. Uh, so we just, we stayed open as much as we could. We try and, mm -hmm. and, and keep the routine as much as we can. Right. So, so did you, did you do any research or I, I think, you know, I know you're a franchise, right? Uh -huh. So you've got some guidance from your franchisor, you know, how did, you know, where's the resources that you use to say, you know what, we need to wipe things down, or maybe we should pick dogs up in the parking lot, or, you know, what are some of the other things that you've done and how did you know how to do them? Two, twofold. I go straight to the source, right? There's so much on the internet and in the news and social media, go to the CDC website. I think that's the, the biggest base of information that you can have. And then we also relied on, on the, the franchise itself. They gave us some specific guidance. We had some conference calls on what could we do to make it safer? What could we do to make people feel better? And if not being around other people and not coming in the building makes you feel better, I'll come out to the car, but then, mm -hmm. So that's that trickle down. What do we do about the dogs? Now we're accepting liability for a puppy in the parking lot. Okay, how do we protect that? All right, we'll double leash them so that nothing can happen. Um, but I, for me, the CDC, the corporate environment, um, and if you think something, if you read something that you think is, wow, that just seems odd, do some more research because it probably is odd. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but, that's very true. You know, um, you know, Dr. Google um, tells you a whole lot of, of things. Um, I could say attorney Google also can tell you all kinds of right? crazy, crazy things. Um, one thing I thought about, you know, your location, you're at the end of University Boulevard at San Jose, and you are in a commercial building with other businesses, although you, you have a very large space there kind of down towards the right. end. Anything from your landlord about how to conduct business? Has there been anything different as far as your landlord and the building has been concerned? 
I wish I could say there was, but no. Okay. Uh, so no, so guidance. No, no, gu no guidance from the landlord. Uh, they've pretty much stayed out of it. Uh, I think, again, the CDC, uh, the American Vet Association, right? Uh, so we have a, a, a franchise vet uh, that, that we run all these questions through. So when something comes up, you know, whether it's the flu for a dog in the state of Florida, we run it by this vet to get the information. Um, so I, I am not a, a medical expert. So you have to rely on those, just like I'm not an attorney, I come to you, right? I need your help, Lori. Uh, so you go to the experts. And I think with anything, the more educated you are on a subject, the more armed you are to, to, to help people or to help yourself. Um, I, you know, I think for me, what I've told the staff is, today is a weird time to be in the service industry because you're gonna have people who wanna come in with a mask. You're gonna have people who don't wanna come in with a mask. I'm not gonna mandate that, that's your, your choice. Um, I'm gonna do what I have to do to make my facility safe and you comfortable. Um, and I'm, I, I'm not in a position to argue with anybody, right? So you see the news and people are arguing about things and it's just, if this is, if this is how you feel and I can make you feel better, I'm gonna do it. Right. And, and do you have any concern? And I've been getting a lot of, of calls and questions about this, about, you know, what your liability is. Like, can somebody, you know, are you concerned at all about liability issues as it relates to COVID? Now, I know every business has their liability issues. I mean, you're taking care of precious family members and, you know, you've got a standard of care and on all of this. For the, Is there anything extra that you're worried about during this time? I wasn't until you said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not telling um, you to be worried. I, I'm no, just wondering no, if you are. Um, so we're a service and I'm not, I, for me, I'm not requiring you to come here. Okay. So I'm not, you're, it's, if you want to miss an appointment, I'm not punishing anybody. I'm not uh, charging cancellation fees, right? If you're okay. uncomfortable, number one, how can I make you feel comfortable? Right. Um, and if you don't want to come, I understand that when this is all over, I'll welcome you back with open arms. Fantastic. Very good. Anything on your employees or workers, anything different there, any kind of adjustments you've had to make? Um, I, again, I think we stay socially distant at work, right? Uh, our staff meetings, our, 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 our changeover meetings are via fence, right? So we don't stand, we don't, we don't have a huddle up, right? Where we might, you know, we go into a quiet room and everybody more or less picks a corner and, and we talk about the day's events from there. Uh, I had uh, a staff member who took a vacation over the weekend, didn't tell me she was going to do it. I made her stay home for two weeks. Mm. Okay. okay so, let's talk about that then. So why did, why were you concerned about her returning to work? Because I didn't know the environment she was in. She mm. went to, to South Florida, which is a little bit, uh, it, it's, there are more cases down there. Mm. Um, and I'm just, I'm not going to take that chance for, for my people or for my customers. So I told her if she went, um, that it was going to be a two week, you know, she'd have to stay home and isolate for two weeks. Uh, she didn't like it, but she did it. Um, fortunately there were no issues. She's come back to work. Um, and we don't have any issues. And, and I've asked all of them, if you're going to go on a vacation, I need to know so that we can plan because you're until we get something going and, and permanent, we, We've got to, you've got to stay home. Yeah. So you've had this conversation then with your employees and said, look, you know, we prefer to you stay home because that makes your risk lower. And if Correct. you do go somewhere, are you asking them to tell you where they're going? I'm asking them in this case. Yes. She wanted a, an extra day off because she was traveling and it started a conversation, mm -hmm. right? Where are you going? Why are you doing that? I, I don't think that we have complete control over all of our employees, right? We don't, I don't know what they do after work. I can just, you know, try and keep it as minimal as possible. But if you tell me you're going to take a vacation, then I've got to do what's right for me, my business and my customers and even my other staff members. Right. right. Um, I want you to, uh, this is unprecedented. We, none of us have ever been through this. So we're kind of, we're kind of all learning on the fly. Well, if you think about it, normally a business owner is looking out for the business, right? What's best for the business? 
what makes us profitable, what makes us run smoothly, how can we make this business function? And usually our interactions with employees are based on our own business concerns. Now it's broader than that, right? Because now we've got employees that might take action that could affect other employees or they could affect our customers and clients as they interact with us. So I think that the concerns we normally would have are just a whole lot broader when it comes to employees. When I, and I think we talk about that. So it, especially like with a groomer, okay? If you go on a vacation as a groomer and you got to stay home for two weeks, you're, you're affecting my P&L. You're affecting my bottom line because I don't have that service to offer. Um, so I'm asking you, please don't, mm-hmm. all right? Or if you're going to go on vacation for a week, it's going to be a three-week vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. And, and give me enough notice so that I can find somebody to fill in. Right. I mean, the first thing I told her is don't worry about your job. Right. I, I want you. You're good at what you do. I want you to come back. But I got to do what's best for me and what's best for everybody else. Sounds good. Mark, you've been a wonderful source of information. Thank you so much for sharing. You know, sometimes as business owners, you know, we, we, we all get kind of isolated, don't we? As business owners, we don't always have the, the opportunity to talk to other business owners in similar situations. And and we're all small business owners. And so as much as we can support each other, let's do so. So thank you for taking the time to do it. I know you're busy. And thank I'm, you. I'm going to um, if you don't mind staying on, there I'll might start. be some questions throughout um, sure. and, and we might call you back later. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody, stay tuned while I switch our speakers. I want to introduce you to Gina Schimpf. And Gina is the owner of Be Still Float Studio. And Be Still Float Studio is a wellness center in Riverside. And Gina is also a client. And I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about what her business offers. Um, But it's a wonderful place. If you've never floated before, it is the most amazing experience. Um, It took me too long to get in to see her and do this float. And once I did, I was completely blown away by how amazing it is. And I'm, I'm going to make it a regular part of my life. So hi, Gina. Hi, Lori. <laughs> Sorry Thanks. for hiding out. We were closed before, but now I'm hiding in one of our service rooms. Uh, oh, thanks okay. for having me. So, you know, it's interesting. A lot of what Mark says, really, I, I can't um, agree with more. And I had to deal with some of the staffing issues very early on. Because before we even went through the mayor's order and we decided to, to shut down, I had one of my employees go to Disney World and I <gasps> Disney World and I had to say I'm sorry if you were in Disney World this weekend you can't come in I need to have you self-isolate for two weeks and then a week later we closed. Wow. Um, so it's important to have all of those plans in place and have those conversations with your employees because to me the biggest surprise about all of this was really the staffing issues. Mm. Before I, we dive into that, I want to give people an idea of what you do so they can understand the context of how your staff interacts. And I'm having a little bit of hard time hearing you. I don't know if if there's a there's a little bit of static or maybe we can turn up your volume a little bit. Um, can you hear me OK? I can hear you fine. Can you hear That's me now? much better. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So tell us what services you offer so people can understand the context. Absolutely. So we're a wellness center in Riverside and we specialize in helping people calm the chaos. Um, chaos around stress, anxiety, and really chronic pain. We offer sensory deprivation therapy, which is also known as float therapy. We go into a sensory deprivation tank for an hour and basically recharge your body and mind as you do a phone. We can talk into the logistics of that later, but it's amazing for your mental health and your physical health as well. We offer massage. We offer infrared sauna services. We start. Um, we do stress release programs. Uh, we've got a pain laser, so we've got lots of different modalities, alternative modalities to help with chronic pain and stress. So our center- So is- massage, obviously, with touching people. Mm-hmm. We've got infrared sauna, so people are in an enclosed space for a period of time. You've got the float tanks that are full of water um, mm-hmm. that are enclosed. You've got various other modalities. What were some of the other ones that you said? The pain laser. Um, pain laser. Sound healing. And sound healing. Sound healing. Okay, so of all of those, there's a lot of contact with your clients, either um, with with a person or with surfaces. Right, right. So, um, 
Good. How have you dealt with this? I know you did shut down for a period of time. And then when you reopened, I, and I know you well, so I know you did a lot of research. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of conversations. Tell us some of your concerns when you were starting to reopen about how your customers might feel and what they might be concerned about and how you address that. Absolutely. So before the state and the, the city shut down, we shut down because there were too many unknowns. Um, I come from a science background and not really being able to understand what we were dealing with and how to mitigate those risks, we just shut down. Um, we didn't want to be responsible for the spread of anything. So we just shut down so we could reevaluate and see what we needed to do because there are so many touch points. Um, belonging to the different service organizations, belonging to the model product health code, um, the CDC, our float tank association, the different massage services, we were able to pull together all of the key pieces of information and put together a plan. I mean, early on, you and I were talking, I think the day I shut down, trying to figure out how do we mitigate the risk? So the first part is identifying the risks, then seeing how to mitigate them. So I started working on um, basically an infectious disease preparedness and response plan. So one, identifying the risks, it didn't mean that they were happening at that moment, but that they could possibly happen. And then what would be the response? Um, we found out early on that the CDC put out a public statement saying that coronavirus was not um, viable in pools that are chlorinated and we use chlorine as a primary disinfectant. So we felt comfortable with the water quality because we got that down. Um, air quality was a concern. Um, we vent to the outside, all of our rooms vent to the outside. So that was really helpful. And then figuring out all the tiny logistics to make sure that all of the possible risks were mitigated um, we're fortunate that all of our rooms are self-enclosed. So when you come in, just the way our space is set up, you feel pretty isolated. You can have several people in the space, but you don't really see them. And the areas where you would possibly have contact, we staggered our schedule so that you don't have as many people coming in and out of the building at the same time. We got mm -hmm. rid of a lot of seating spaces. We took away our refreshment bars. We took away certain things if we didn't feel like we could um, clean them in a proper manner. We really evaluated all of our cleaning products, something that a lot of people aren't aware of is well time, how long a product needs to stay on the surface to do its job. It's not just a matter of spraying it and then wiping it down. So we had a lot of training to make sure the staff understood all the new cleaning protocols. And the CDC has a great website where every product is listed. You can just look on there and find out if it's approved for COVID and, and what its kill time is. Interesting. Okay, so I didn't know this. So the CDC has a list of products yep. that you you went and looked and said these products are effective against uh, the coronavirus. Yes. Okay. So I can and then that link later if you'd like. That would be fantastic. And and once you're back in the chat, maybe you can post that link for our attendees as well. Sure. Um, and then really the other part of it is talking to your employees. Are they ready? Mark alluded mm -hmm. to this. Um, we all had a conversation about what we felt comfortable doing, what were our hours. Some of my employees could come back to work because now they had children at school. Um, we all decided that it was important to wear masks. However, one employee didn't feel comfortable with that, so he decided to not come back. Um, so does that? So are you requiring your employees to wear masks? We are. And we are. and your and your reason for that is that there's just too much interaction, close contact, to not do that. Correct. Wherever we can reduce that contact, before we used to do an in-person intro, we recorded all of that so people get a link with a video explaining everything. Um, and we ordered partitions. So we got partitions in place when there's um, an extended period of contact. However, we have a lot of people from the medical field that can see us. And they were asking. So a lot of what we put together was based off of our members contacting Oh, how have interesting. Have you thought about this? When I come back, I would like to see this. Um, have you thought about this? It was really helpful to hear from our members. We stayed in close contact with them, and they really wanted to come in. Several people asked us to contact the mayor's office. Several people contacted the mayor's office for us. So we were actually getting ready to open even before um, we were able to. The timing just all coincided. We did do a soft open where we opened for the first week only to our members to make sure that we had all of the right processes in place and things that we may have not thought about um, mm. were correct. So that was really helpful. How did that soft open work? How did you do? Did you just allow certain people to come in and 
access the facility while you're kind of testing your procedures? We pretty much had our procedures down, um, but we only allowed our members to go, come in. So we did. We had limited hours and a limited population that we were familiar with. And so we were able to ask them questions. How did you feel about the chairs being in another room? How did you feel about those partitions there? How do you feel about signing a waiver every time you come in? Because we have a COVID waiver. We have COVID okay, let's talk about that because we just have a question about that. Um, tell us about your, your waiver that you've put in place now. Yes, so we've got two waivers, one for the service, and that service waiver is good for a year. However, and that's just regular. It's it's regular, just, whether I'm it's in, like, uh, just like any, right, okay. But then there's a COVID waiver. It's not very, very long, but it asks key questions. It asks if you've been to any um, of the hotspot areas. If you, at that point, if you traveled internationally, because we started working on this waiver early on, um, if you have a fever in the last two weeks, just ask me about symptoms and they have to self, they have to state that they don't have any of those things. Um, we do do temperature checks and we make sure that those waivers are in place and we ask people to wear masks. Those are the things that have made our community feel safe. And um, like Mark said, we're a private business. You don't have to come see us. It's a choice that you're making. But a lot of the people that can see us have high anxiety. So having these procedures in place makes you feel safe. So, so have you heard the feedback from your customers and clients then is they want these procedures in place? Yes, we've had nothing but we had one person who was not pleased with having to wear a mask, but they did it and then they took it off afterwards and it was fine. And they thanked us for being open. So the majority of people want you to take these precautions, have your employees wear masks, make sure you're signing waivers because the, yep. the, the waivers that you're having them sign aren't just a waiver. It's a questionnaire. It's a screening that says, mm -hmm. are you at risk? And if you come in, are you putting us at risk? So how are you doing your temperature checks? We've got a um, one of those thermal thermometers. So we just wave it at the forehead and that's it. No touching involved? No touching involved. Okay, so, so people get screened for fever. They go through this checklist that says, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. I haven't traveled very far. Um, all of these... Uh, risky behaviors I haven't done so now I'm cleared to come in what if you have somebody that has a fever or that has said I've just traveled to New York or um, you know my husband had COVID last week then in the waiver it says if you've been around anyone who's tested positive or suspects that they have COVID we ask them to wait two weeks now with our you wait two weeks mm -hmm. two weeks okay yep. with our employees again it's mitigating risk we ask them to wait three weeks because there have been some instances where people have been shedding past the two-week mark. And again, mm -hmm. we've got a lot of um, healthcare providers and physicians that come to us. And one of them had said, Gina, you really want to take this into account. And so for our employees, um, which we actually had the situation of her, somebody um, had a fever spike over the weekend. So they didn't come in and until they either get tested for COVID and test negative, or they wait the three-week period, they can't come back. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second because that's really interesting. So we were talking about clients and how to deal with clients and customers when they come in and, and the procedures that you put in place to protect them. So you've got your cleaning supplies, uh, you've got your procedures for wiping it down, you've got your screening at the beginning where you're making sure that sick people are not coming in, and then you also have a waiver in place that says, um, you know, you haven't done all these things and you understand that coming into contact with people and all this is a risky thing and you take the risk yourself, right? Correct. Yes. So all of that is with your customers and your clients. And so far, as far, before we get into employees, because I know that's an interesting topic. Yeah. So far with clients, though, no hiccups, no problems, pushback from anybody other than the one person that complained they'd have to wear a mask but did it anyway. No, nothing but gratitude been wonderful. People were just really thankful to come back um, and really appreciated us being open and everything we're doing to be open. Were you afraid or worried about implementing that waiver and these procedures? Were you worried about how people would react to it? I was. One, I was worried people weren't feel comfortable coming at all. So, okay, our doors are open. Is anyone going to come? Um, and then would they be turned off by all of those procedures? But the opposite. The opposite has happened. They're thankful there. Mm -hmm. That makes them feel more secure. And this is the feedback that you're getting. Yeah. That's interesting because across the board, my clients that have done these procedures, the feedback has been 
every single one of them has said their clients have given them positive feedback, that they are not getting any pushback. I mean, you see, you know, the things in the news and social media about, you know, customers throwing fits that they have to do something that a business is requiring. I, I haven't heard any of that from any uh, of, of our clients or small businesses, the community. You know, there might be some people that are like, Eh, I don't really want to wear a mask, but okay, I might wear it. But nothing of the large scale pushback yep. that people might be worried about, right? Yep. And and do you feel better screening your clients this way? Absolutely. What does it do for you? What does it do as, for you as a business? How does it feel? Well, in general, we always ask people, if you're not feeling well, to be scheduled. Uh, that was, so the people that knew us already knew that they wouldn't be coming in if they weren't feeling well. Um, it gives me peace of mind. This is my happy place. This is my second home. So I need to feel safe here because I don't know what I'm going to be taking home to my family. Um, and I think my employees felt the same way as well. Okay. Let's talk about employees. So, um, so your employees and, and, you know, this is really where we're starting to see the biggest piece of complexity. And that's why we have an expert after you, Shana Ryan's uh, HR consultant. And she's going to talk to us a little bit about some employee stuff. So, so this is where we're really starting to see some challenges arise. Um, what challenges have you had? And you just mentioned something about um, one of your employees had a, a fever over the weekend. So let's just talk about that. Let's just say an employee gets sick. I, I mean, what, what do you, how do you handle that? Um, so let's step back for just a second. Before we opened, when we had a huge staff meeting, we had a huge deep clean day. We talked about all of these things. Um, we talked about the waiver that was going to be in place, and we talked about that, how that was a standing waiver for all of the staff. So the minute you showed a symptom, the minute you came in contact with someone, they had to let me know, and that they'd have to self-isolate for a period of time. Um, the new thing is that there's an option to get tested now, because before, that option wasn't available. Um, and we also needed to make sure we had enough PPE face masks for our employees, enough hand sanitizer, enough cleaner. So there's a lot of stuff you have to have in place. And thank goodness I ordered it very early on mm. before you open. Because, uh, you know, Mark talked about his Clorox wipes. You can't get them off the shelf right now. Um, cleaners, you know, you need to make sure you've got enough of a supply. It's not enough for a couple of weeks, but you have enough to maintain your ongoing business. Um, so making sure I had enough of, of everything that made all of my employees feel comfortable was important. Now back to the fever incident. Uh, I'm lucky that I have enough employees that I can shuffle people around and where necessary, I can fill in. Um, but I'm starting to hire. I need to have a deeper bench just in case because I'm seeing the writing on the wall. It's, it's, it's very disruptive to have somebody out for two weeks and you don't really know if somebody else that you're relying on is going to be out for two weeks as well. So regardless of, of because this employee had a fever, you're you're asking them to stay home for two weeks. Yes. And I'm saying three weeks because three really weeks. my employees, I want three weeks. Okay. So three weeks. Um, are you asking them to get tested? Yes. And we will cover the cost of testing. Um, she has made an appointment. She, and this is where the nuances, and I actually need to speak with our expert. She's waited a long time to get tested, which is impacting me. Mm. Um, when I made arrangements for her to get tested much sooner, that's been a real challenge. So as it is, I haven't put her on the schedule for next week. And she's hurting herself there, um, but I can't take that risk. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, other employees, any issues with anybody else getting sick at this point? With whether it's for COVID or just a cold or whatever, allergies, whatever. But see, that's the problem. Some of the symptoms of COVID are very similar to allergies or other an innocuous cold. Mm -hmm. um, so we did have, um, you know. We, ha we haven't dealt with that yet, but I'm, I am concerned about that because a lot of those symptoms are very generic. Mm -hmm. You could have a toothache and spike a fever. Right. So so your plan, and, and it's good to have a plan. And I think a lot of times small business owners are dealing with the day-to-day, -day, like, okay, what do I need to, to, to think about now? Um, but they're starting to see that there's other instances that could come up. So if you do have a sick employee, um, setting aside the whole sick pay issue, how do you just function with a, a sick employee? What do you 
what do you actually do with them? Um, of course, you know, they, they stay home. You know, how long do they stay home? Do you require testing? How do you deal with the lack of, of um, personnel on staff? And you're dealing with it by just hiring more people so that you have more of a bench to pull from as people may or may not be getting sick um, and have to stay home for that period of time. Um, any comments? How are your employees handling this? What, how, what, what do they feel? What are they saying? They've all been great. Um, like I said, I had that one employee who didn't feel comfortable wearing a mask. He also didn't feel comfortable with a lot of the information that's out there by the CDC. So that's an important thing. Um, okay. When we had that big staff meeting and part of that infectious disease preparedness plan, I put what I understood from the CDC and all the different sources, what I thought we were dealing with and why it was an issue whether it's airborne, waterborne, how it can get spread and how the fact that things are changing all the time and that that information is get up, going to be updated. So I had every employee read that document, have an opportunity to ask questions in a group and sign a document saying that they read that document. Because that way we're all working from the same um, base of information. Set of facts. So you, you they had them sign saying what? I didn't hear that part. That they, they read the plan and they agreed to abide by it. Okay. And he had an issue with that information. He disagreed with the CDC's information. In other words, he was questioning that the accuracy of those that information. Correct. Okay. And so then he didn't feel comfortable moving forward um, with activities based on that information. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he decided to move on. Yep. Okay. Any other employees that have had issues or have expressed either like, I'm so glad you're doing this. This makes me feel comfortable. I don't want to get sick or, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm happy to do what I'm, you know, what you're asking or what's the feedback? No, they all agree that they were the right things to be doing. And a lot okay. of the things, believe it or not, we were already doing anyway. Um, so it wasn't new to them, but okay. you know, everyone was on board. Okay. Gina, thank you so much. I mean, you are a wealth of information, not only because you're in the health industry, um, because you do so much research and um, and with your background and, and you really go the extra mile to research it and make sure you're doing the right thing with all the latest, greatest information. Um, I know, you know, just from being there, I know from, from working with you for, for several years that you're really taking special care to make sure that your place is safe. So that's why I wanted you to be on this <laughs> panel today. And thank you so much for taking the time. Do you mind sticking around in case there's some questions for you later? Not at all. Thanks, Lord. Okay. Thanks, Sheena. I'm going to pull up Shana. All right, everybody. So our next guest is Shana Ryan. Shana is an HR consultant and her company is called uh, Conceptual HR and she helps businesses with 49 employees or less. So she's really focused on the small business sector and they, she, they do all different HR um, areas uh, to help and support people. So hi, Shana. Hi, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Great. How are you? <laughs> I bet you're really busy right now. <laughs> I am actually. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to to speak with us and, and ask some, um, answer some questions and, and ask some questions. Uh, so I know you've been hearing, you know, what Mark's issues, you know, with, with employees and kind of having people spread out and, and Gina um, have sharing some of her stories with, with some employees that have had some issues. Are you seeing your clients? Are they saying some similar things? The majority of my clients have actually been able to stay open. So they've been deemed essential and I've had one a commercial roofer that just the business is down right now. Um, but Generally speaking, pretty much everyone has been able to stay open. They have put, you know, plans in place to keep their employees safe. So I've got one client that has shut off to the public, but they're continuing making what they make. It's a food manufacturer. So they are continuing to make what they make, but they have implemented where more people wear masks and, you know, this safe distancing and things of that nature. And then I've got another client who was able to accommodate a lot of people working from home and just have the employees that really need to be there, there. But now they're migrating more back where everyone comes back into the office. 
So I'm hearing that uh, your clients then have a whole lot of experience and you've probably seen some of this from them is during this whole time, some of the some of the places like Gina's place, I mean, she shut down, Mark kept open. So some, so with your clients staying open, um, I want to focus on the employee part. Mm -hmm. Any feedback or pushback that you're seeing from employees that for businesses that have stayed open or continue to stay open that, you know, employees are not wanting to come in? There were some that were um, gave a little bit of pushback. And I think it falls in with the unemployment being so great right now and thinking that they could potentially get in to some of the um, the paid time off and things of that nature that's being offered right now, the family's first requirements. Once it was pushed back on and just told flat out, you know, you have to meet these requirements in order to qualify for these different benefits. You know, you do have a job to come to. And at the end of the day, you should pretty, you should be grateful for that. So once the line in the sand and that clear communication, and that's what it really boils down to having a plan, clearly communicating it and sticking to it then the problems tend to weed themselves out okay. and you know and communicating asking well if you're not comfortable what can we do to make you more comfortable you may not be able to accommodate you won't probably be able to accommodate every single request but the fact that they are able to voice it and you it might be something you haven't thought of so i would definitely encourage ownership and managers to talk with their employees to see what little shift potentially could we do to make them feel better. And, you know, your their quality of work is going to be a lot higher if they feel comfortable and they feel heard and have that right to come in and communicate and potentially help with the policies. Because again, none of us have been through this before. So the more heads in the game that you can get is is ideal. And I think that's the key really that I'm seeing is that, you know, those clients that are being flexible, if they can, and mm -hmm. hearing the concerns of their employees and trying to say, let's see if there's something reasonable that I could do to make you feel better. Exactly. Um, those people end up in a better situation than just saying, no, this is what you have to do. Come on in. Um, you know, so I'll just give you my example. Um, we are all still working from home. This is my first day back in the office and I figured it would be apropos to come in for this webinar today. Um, you know, and I will probably start coming back in and I'm going to let my employees decide when they feel that they wanna come back into the office. That's okay for me because we still fully function if everyone's working from home. So you know, I've had work from home employees all along. Um, some of them have done it temporary. Some of them have done it permanent. So really it it's works for my business. So I'm in the position to be able to say, that's okay if you don't feel comfortable. But if I'm in a position where I have to say, no, somebody has to be sitting here at the desk in the office to be able to do their job. And they say, no, we can't come in. And you need somebody sitting there to do the job. Um, I think that's really where some people are are seeing some some pushback. And like you said, with some unemployment benefits and such. So that's one of the things. And I think the work from home, um, and I'm sure you've you've kind of gone past that wave, right? When everything kind of shut down, um, yeah, and everybody was set home, you kind of I'm assuming you got this wave of work from home policies <laughs> thrown at you. <laughs> so, um, so, so those of us who thought this was kind of going to be really quick and temporary, um, and are now considering maybe it's going to be a little bit of a longer situation to work from home. Um, I think it's probably a good idea if you don't have a work from home policy in place to now start thinking about it. Right. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And with the work from home, it's more definitely set the parameters of these are the times you need to be available if there are actual times make sure that is clearly communicated and make sure to function and, and run it more off goals and benchmarks and deadlines versus the traditional you know nine to five so but if there's a specific time or meetings make sure to clearly communicate that as well 
what I'm what some of the things that I've seen is um, work from home. They're still working for you. So wage and hour still applies, right? Overtime. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right? yeah. What about workers comp? Yeah, workers comp, you would need to talk with your broker because they are performing work at their home and that address would need to be added to your workers comp policy. Mm. So that's, you definitely need to reach out. Yeah, I'm wondering about that now too, because, you know, we thought this was temporary and we we sent, you know, everybody home, <clears throat> including myself, mm -hmm. and didn't think to, you know, this was going to be a permanent thing. Um, you know, we'll come back in a few weeks. Well, now I'm hearing that some of the employees are wanting to make this more of a permanent thing, at least for the foreseeable future. Right. <clears throat> and thinking about the work, the workers comp thing, you know, we're going to have to call and say, OK, now here's what we've got. We've got this worker working from home, this one from mm -hmm. home. And I'm wondering if you've seen any and you might not because this isn't your area of expertise. But if you've heard about any workers comp companies saying, no, I'm sorry, we're not going to cover that or no, you can't do that. I haven't heard of that. It's my understanding that they're not covering COVID. Um, the last I had looked into it was kind of when this first came out. Again, my disclaimer, not a broker, but right. I am the liaison and I do work with my clients on their workers comp. So when I reached out to a broker from a company who had asked and they primarily work from home anyway. Mm -hmm. So this wasn't a big shift for them, but they did ask, you know, what if I contract it? And to my knowledge, workers comp is not covering any of that. Mm. So, because you can't prove where you got it, mm. but you know, what about that's, that's important though. What if somebody gets hurt? So workers comp obviously mm -hmm. is when you get injured on the job. Right. You're doing your business, you're, you're doing your employee duties and you get injured. Workers comp covers your injury mm -hmm. costs and medical costs. But if you're working from home and you get up to go get a snack and you cut yourself while, you know, cutting pieces of apple. I mean, <laughs> I'm just pulling this out of my head, you know, not that I've ever done it or anything. Um, but I mean, you could see that, you know, and there's a question here actually from Mark that says, you know, when are you on the clock and when are you off? When are you doing business duties versus non-business duties? Is cutting my apple for snack, you know, part of me being on the clock and with workers comp? So I know you don't have the answers to that. Um, is and, and I'm not expecting you to. I'm just pointing out that, you know, sometimes people right now are thinking that, you know, work from home is, oh, not so bad as I thought it would be. Maybe we're going to like keep this permanently know that there are these issues that you had to deal with on a temporary basis. And if you choose to deal with them on a permanent basis, you need to understand what the issues actually are. Yeah. Right? And that's something to definitely reach out to your broker on and, and ask these questions for sure, because it, it can definitely pe become an issue. Yeah. Um, and just while I'm looking in the chat, Gina, thank you for posting that link to the CDC uh, cleaners. I appreciate that. And I'm sure our attendees do as well. Um, so work from I'm home. Post the link also. So there, um, one of the big things with employees and hand handling employees and something to offer, especially if you do have some employees who have anxiety about this, maybe they have a grandparent living with them or something of and that nature. So they're coming to close contact with someone who is highly susceptible to the virus. There is, um, Optum has a counseling available at no charge. So I'm going to post the link to this as well for it's for emotional support in relation to the coronavirus. And yeah. it's, it's, it's for anybody. Yeah. Nice. Okay. It's a service that Optum is offering in relation to the coronavirus. So it's a it's a good resource or, you know, especially with smaller companies, budgets are really tight, I get it. But this is a free resource that Optum Healthcare is offering. Fantastic. So you can give this information to employees, given that 800 number that's on that link um, and have them call if, if they're having stresses in relation to this that, you know, they can get a professional to help them with. So is this the type of service that if somebody has been working from home temporarily and is now being asked to come back in and they have got anxiety about that, that's this is some Any, a resource that they could use. Yeah, anything that is in relation to COVID-19. Okay. So we've talked about work from home and we know that there's pitfalls there like workers comp. We know that there's 
security technology. I mean, we know that there's a million issues with work or, with work from home. I think yeah. before we switch to return to work issues, um, I want to make sure that people understand that if you do decide to keep employees home for the foreseeable future, you really need to have a work from home policy that Absolutely. addresses some of those things. And a one size fit does not fit all. So if no. you pull one down from the internet and you say, this is going to be my work from home policy, just be aware that when you put that policy into place, you're responsible for that policy. So whether it applies in your situation or not, and you're like, well, no, we don't do it that way. I and mean, it's in your policy, that's too bad. This is the new way you're doing it. Um, yeah, you have to be consistent. You can't right. treat one person one way and another person another way, because even if that's what actually works for your business, you need to have it in writing as to why. And that specific job description functions this way versus another one functions another way. So it really needs to be thought out because that can get you caught up in the discrimination debacle pretty quickly. Right, exactly. And, and you know, I've read a lot of articles lately about uh, anticipation of some employee claims and things like that. So we don't know where that's going because like you said, it's right. also new. We don't really know. We don't have precedent that says this is how you handle this situation. So um, so to put these work from home policies in place is the best thing and to make them specific to you yeah. and how you do things in your business and is the most if important there thing. is an issue to as annoying as it is. I will say that as an HR professional, it's annoying to document everything, but things happen so quickly and you're on to the next thing. Even if it's like talking to text real quick that you can then save later as a document while you're driving down the street, tell Siri to do it. Something to wear and the, with the dates so you can remember specifics of what happened if there is an issue, because who knows where it will be a year from now. And, you know, if you're going to have a, an attorney come back with a subpoena and you just never know mm -hmm. um, or the EEOC claim or anything like that. So the more documentation of specifics on how you handled the situation, what the employee did to to cause that situation or what happened within your business at that point in time, capture that snapshot. Okay. That's good advice. So before we run out of time, let's cover really quickly the return sure. to work issues for employees. And so we've heard some of that. So, so mm -hmm. those employees who have either been working from home and are coming back into the work work site or the business has been closed and now is reopening and now the employees are coming back and in whatever reason employees are now coming back on site mm -hmm. what are you seeing as some of the biggest issues not really just winging it we got to get people back in here we're open let's go um and it's not how it was a few months ago so you can't you have to plan differently and you have to actually it, it can't run the way that it did before so you know as gina says having a plan in place having a COVID 19 plan in place trying to think through all the scenarios if someone's exposed but not showing symptoms how do you handle that if someone is showing symptoms how do you handle that there's a multitude of different things that you have to think about and how are you going to tell your tell your employees you know you should communicate with them if someone is being tested so how do you let them know before they find out from the employee that's being tested and cause this tidal wave? It should come from the employer. So there's been cases just, you know, reading through that, you know, employees will go in and say, oh, I'm going to get tested and then starts this firestorm within the organization. So try to mitigate that as well as you can by communicating, yes, you know, John Doe did show symptoms. We are sending him for testing. Here's what we're going to do to ensure your protection. Mm -hmm. Let's take a time out, clean everything down, make sure his station's Lysol really well, something like that. So they're involved in it and they also have an understanding of what's going on. So the standard, you know, try to, if it's cubicles, try to space things out more. If it's countertops, the, the six feet apart, perhaps getting the partitions or requiring masks like Gina does. So, so not so, everyone's going to be happy, but you have to put forth, forth your best effort. There's so many issues here that I want to unpack. Um, mm -hmm. One of them is HIPAA, right? Mm -hmm. So even though 
as businesses, I'm not a covered entity. I'm not subject to HIPAA. I'm not a physician. I'm not um, I, even so even when people say I'm not covered by HIPAA, we do have Florida state privacy rules that mm -hmm. say that you can't disclose health information of, of somebody and include that includes our employees. So it's really tricky line and, and about how you would say so-and-so is going to get tested. Um, I think, you know, having some kind of canned response that you might do for every employee, um, you know, how, how are you advising your, your clients? You just say, yes, it's our policy that, you know, we require testing at certain times, um, you know, and, 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 maybe not have to say so-and-so had a fever or so-and-so had a cough or something like that to, to kind of say, you know, our policy is to require testing at certain times. Um, and, and can you even require testing? I believe that you can require testing if you're showing symptoms. So a lot of those, you know, a lot of the privacy laws are, are tweaked due to the pandemic right now. Mm -hmm. So what you would normally not be able to do, such as taking temperatures, you can definitely do now. So <clears throat> in that event, you know, and again, it goes back to communication and open communication with, and having that in the policy. So you can put in your policy that you strive as an organization to have open communication and ask that employee in the event that they have a fever and are being tested, are you comfortable with me telling? you know, so we can prepare accordingly. And that's a good one. That's good. Yeah. Say, look, can we notify anybody who's had contact with you just to make sure if they want to get tested, that into your policy? That. So everyone is aware if this happens to me, you know, I, I want to be able to protect my coworkers and help them. So if they don't know about that, then that's not helping them. So if you have that close culture and communication lines, then chances are they'll be like, yeah, absolutely. Please tell them because I want them to be safe as well. Right. That's a really good point. And I think that's part of what the return to work policies are going to need to start yeah. being. And I, I love the fact that you said, look, you just can't wing it. You just can't say, okay, we got to get everybody back in here. Let's open up and not think through things because once they happen, sometimes it's too late to deal with. And then exactly. you find yourself in a real pitfall that takes so many resources, money, mm -hmm. attention, time, and right. you have to deal with this issue that if you had just taken five minutes to begin with to think about it, it could have completely been avoided. So right. you know, yeah. don't to wait for, a, go ahead. <laughs> have a proactive approach with this um, instead of reactive is really important. Yeah. And every business is going to be different, right? I mean, Absolutely. you said something about roofers, um, you know, manufacturers are going to be different. People who work in offices is going to, are going to be different than somebody like Gina's um, location uh -huh. or Mark's location um, or any other type of, of personal service. Um, it, it's just every business has to be different. So thinking about what is unique for you and what your employees are doing. Um, any, if you guys have any questions for Shana, I'm happy to ask her um, in the, if you want to type them in the chat. Um, we do have just a few minutes to wrap up because we're keeping it shortly to an hour. Shana, I know when you were preparing for this webinar and thinking about the topics that you wanted to talk about, is there anything on your list that we did not talk about already that you wanted to say? I think that we also need to pre be prepared for a potential additional shutdown towards the end of the year. So I'm curious how it's, I mean, I have children, but I'm afraid they're going to go back to school and then one case is going to be, you know, found and then the whole thing's going to shut down again and we're going to go in, into that mode again. So I think, yes, you need to plan for right now. But again, you might want to also think about what happens if we shut down again? How are we going to handle that? That's a really good, a really good point is that, you know, we're all so excited that we get start seeing each other again um, and, and and seeing that life has the potential to, to return to, to somewhat of a normal, hopefully at some point in the future. But we might actually have to go through this one more time. And looking back now that it's so fresh with in time, say, what would I do differently now mm -hmm. if I had to go back into this mode again? What would I do right. differently and that will help you prepare for the next time should it occur. And I, I too would think that all indications are that it there will be a resurgence and we might have to do this again 
before the end of the year. And we want to make it as seamless as possible. Another thing we can't forget about is every year is hurricane season. So we're going into <laughs> hurricane season along with a pandemic, which is, you know, super fun. So let's not forget what if a big storm comes through? How are we going to handle that? So yeah. emergency preparedness plan for the business, um, mostly about protecting your business assets and in technology and being able to continue mm -hmm. to, to keep rolling. And some of those plans uh, are able to be put into place, you know, with the shutdown as well. So Shana, thank you so much for thank taking the time. I know you're swamped right now with all of the, your clients and, and their, their employee issues and HR help. So thank you so much. I don't see any questions from anybody. Everybody, thank you very much for taking the time. I hope this has been helpful. We have recorded it. So we will be sending out a recording and everybody have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye.